Ooh, welcome man, welcome back to the channel guys, real quick, um, I don't know, y'all recognize this center console, well I'm gonna make this a generic video anyway, based off the complaint, because I have a pretty good idea, and I, want, I don't want to even call out a vehicle, I don't want this to be interpreted as a Dodge video, or a Chrysler video, or a Jeep, or Chevrolet, or Ford, just a general vehicle repair video right here i'm gonna make this i found out i have some young uh students uh mechanical mechanical students uh young guys that's uh uh want to choose mechanics or automotive technology as a career all right so i'm gonna make this a basic video on suspension 101 based off the complaint i read i haven't checked anything or drove it or anything so what i'm gonna do on this video is refrain from calling out the vehicle name because this diagnostic should apply to any and all cars a typical front wheel drive car which is what this is all right guys so uh let's get started first thing first we have to duplicate the problem guys and based on the complaint which is uh a ticky noise or noise in the suspension all right so what we're gonna do we're gonna go drive this thing guys now i can't drive on the road so what i'm gonna do is head to a lot where i can try to do some turning and maneuvering to help duplicate this problem okay guys stay tuned man let's get it all right guys i'm uh i'm getting ready to go into this parking lot where i can make some hard turns okay chasing ticking sounds on turn at least that's what the complaint is all right we're gonna find out now well, you all know everybody knows uh, this is a front wheel drive car which means it's gonna have two axles coming out of the transaxle all right so here's a nice lot a nice area where i can turn wow this truck is loud over here guys i'm in the lowe's parking lot i don't think this is illegal but we're gonna try to reproduce this noise all right let me turn this hard left and give it some gas uh-oh i got a truck I gotta wait okay guys i'm hard left and i'm finna give it some gas oh y'all hear that y'all may can't hear it because of that loud truck but yes I am ticking on a hard right turn. Now let's try, oh, hard left turn. Let's try right turn. Pegged out, all right? I'm hard right. Let's see. Whoa, it's ticking on that side too. Okay, guys, I've got a pretty good idea. I'm gonna head back to the shop. I got a pretty good idea what to look for, what to suspect, what to inspect. Okay, namely, you're going to have to inspect the suspension system. Okay, the suspension, the whole suspension system, guys. Okay, remember, this is a front-wheel drive car. Rear-wheel drive cars. Now, unless they are all-wheel drive, there will be a PTU included, which means axles will may be coming out of the uh, PTU to the front wheels, which would mean they will have axles. But this is not a rear-wheel drive car. Okay, so... Uh, you basically need to inspect any car you're working on, whether it's front-wheel drive or rear-wheel drive. All right, guys, so I don't want to be driving on the road, so I'm going to shut this down. Next time you see me, I will be in the shop, guys. Stay tuned. All right, guys, we're going in the air. We're going to look this suspension over. Okay, this... Uh, okay. Now, remember, guys, y'all remember the complaint. Uh, ticking noise on turn. Now, because this is a front-wheel drive axle assembly, Front wheel drive axle, meaning the axle assembly is built into the transmission, so they tend to call it a transaxle. All right, so if you have your car is equipped with a front wheel drive transaxle, you're likely gonna have two drive shafts coming out of the transmission going toward the front wheels. Okay, that's how you transfer a torque from the transmission to the wheels, which will allow the car to move. Now, you can physically inspect these. See, I see a little grease right here. Any signs of grease uh, typically going to mean there's a leak somewhere, guys. So there's no other way around it. Grease not just going to come out on its own. Now, will the sight of grease, does the sight of grease indicate a problem, a ticking problems on turns? Because keep in mind, when you turn your wheel full right or full left, this is a joint. This joint is twisted all the way to whichever way you turn it, which means... Uh, yes, if there's something going on internal to this joint, it could produce noise. And that is exactly what uh, is happening, what I suspect happening. Okay, inspect both sides, guys. Oh, 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 see, this one is worse. 
Okay. Now see, in some cases, as you know, anything that moves like that, uh, joint-wise, requires grease to to prolong its life. So you can see grease has been slinging all. Yeah, this is all grease. So guys, this uh this joint is likely uh, I wouldn't say empty, but it is lacking all the grease that it's supposed to have, which in turn could produce noise, guys. Oh yes, so it's slinging. Yeah, it go all the grease right here. So now I will say this, guys. In the past, we was able to repair these. Okay, replace the joint, pack in new grease, and pack in a new boot to seal it all off. But not so, not so these days. I think they sell axle as a simile now. So you're gonna get a complete axle. Uh, now, should you replace both? Uh, in this case, I'm gonna have to because this one is leaking, and any sign of leak, like I said earlier, is gonna indicate uh, the the joint is likely doesn't have the same amount of grease inside of it. So, uh, yes, I have to replace. I have to write both of these up. Okay. Oh wow! Now. Go ahead and proceed with the rest of your front suspension inspection. But as far as the complaint that it actually came in for, you can visually see uh, your problem. You can sometimes grab these, uh, push up and down, see if there's any play in it. But my problem is visual. I can see what's going on. But it, hypothetically, if you didn't see this grease, uh, then you have to go ahead and complete your suspension. You know, 6 o'clock, 12 o'clock, 3 o'clock, and 9 o'clock. Make sure the suspension is tight, but if there was no sign of grease, of, you didn't see this, what do you do? Okay, I mean, you can, like I say, try to grab the complete axle assembly, move up and down, see if there's any play. But typically, guys, see, this is a two-piece axle here, but there's only one joint. So this is just a stationary shaft coming from the transmission to this intermediate shaft and then going out into an axle. Okay, this, this here is, is doing nothing, okay, so never... Uh, now it do have a small bushing bearing inside of here, but we're not chasing bearing noise, we're chasing ticking noise, and that typically comes from the axle assembly. Alright, so what I'm gonna do is write up both axles. Let's, don't stop there, guys. Uh, look the car over. I know we're dealing with suspension right now, but uh, this car do not have a lot of miles on it. Now, which begs the question how does this happen? And low mileage cars easily simple guys uh, you're driving on public roads anything can be in the road anything can snag up under here and rip this so it's not always uh, a parts failure I guess is what I'm trying to say in some cases it can be induced you can run over some trash in the road and slice your boot all right most cars have a whole big old shield covering the whole underbody of their car to help prevent that but I'm not sure how you can cover uh, size of suspension parts it's hard to okay so you leave it exposed you know to the atmosphere to your driving conditions and this is likely what happened if uh, the boot didn't just split I, don't, I can't see a boot just splitting on its own so something I'm not saying it can't happen but I can't see it happening on this particular issue so uh, there's no it's not a rear wheel drive car or it's not a four-wheel drive, all-wheel drive car, so there's no axle assembly in the rear. Although this is designed to be accompanied by one if the car was equipped. So you could typically add axles. Y'all see the book? Uh, you can typically add stuff. They, Some car makers leave their options open, okay, so they don't have to make a lot of parts. They just make parts that's compatible with either or, all right? So guys, I'm going to write up two axles, finish the inspection. Uh, I'm likely going to write up an alignment um, and check the brakes. So I got a lot more work to do, but I want to clarify that with you guys and go over that with you guys, especially my newcomers, uh, my trainees, uh, my students, all right? So if this video was fairly basic to you, I apologize. I just found out I do have uh, several mechanically, uh, mechanical enthusiasts on the channel and I want to uh, communicate with them from time to time, okay guys?
Okay, now, the way I remove this, guys, I mean, it's different ways you can go by it, okay? One of my trainer, he tends to like to remove the lower ball joint. It, it's whatever. There's no right or wrong way to do it. It's just the way I do it, okay? I remove the strut bolt, okay? That will allow me to swing the knuckle outwards, which will allow me to remove the axle. I can gain a lot of room this way, all right? Now, keep in mind, guys, I want you to make sure you support this knuckle you don't want it see I, I got flex right here you don't want any strain on this brake hose or this abs sensor all right so be mindful of that so i'm using a, a rope to support it okay of course you got the tie rise right here all right now guys once you pull that out you will lose some transmission fluid so knowing that you should be mindful that you pretty much need to check the transmission fluid level when you're done okay simply because you're going to lose some transmission fluid uh, unless you seal that off but you're still going to lose some even once you pull the axle out you're still going to lose some so i have a bucket down there but here's the parts that they got me yes these are mopar i love mopar uh but this is the axle semi it do not have to be mopar okay i only go crazy with the only mopar uh syndrome basically pretty much on uh, sensors and things like that okay but ah, these are axle guys they can be a lot of good great companies out there make Deakson axles okay there's the old one like I say it's pretty much ticking in shot so because I'm doing both sides I have two axles all right yeah all right, that should hold me, guys. Now, I'm not going to film the installation because it's merely a reversal of the removal process, okay? But just make sure you go in with the right axle. That's the one on the left side. Here's the one on the right side. So, guys, I got some work to do. Thanks for watching. That's all I have. Come and subscribe. I'll see y'all in the next video.